There we go. Okay, so I'm John Verley, the uh, advisor for the computer science uh, students working on this uh, project. And um, let's see, I have to say this has been a great project, this really strong group of students, um, the, both the, the complexity of what the students have been able to put together in this amount of time. And this, for those of you that don't know how this works, this is the product of uh, five uh, senior uh, from the computer science side. There's a lot of other students working in the other departments too. Um, in the computer science side, we've got five seniors working in one course per one three unit course per semester for two semesters. The amount of work and the complexity of the project that they put together in that time is really, really, uh, really, really impressive. Um, and also, we've been working with uh, some of Zachary's design students and uh, Cynthia's communication students. And when you see the way the project looks, this is, I mean, it's, it's um, uh, certainly among the best senior design projects I've ever seen, but in functionality, in aesthetics, it just, it just blows out of the water any other senior design project I've ever seen. When you see it, you'll see it, it looks really, really nice. Um, thanks to some great students, uh, thanks to two liaisons or, or multiple liaisons, but especially uh, Cynthia and Zachary, who really had a clear vision for what they want. Um, in senior design projects, oftentimes working with the liaisons, the liaisons are, are in some point in some hierarchy and they, they're not clear on what they want. They're not clear on what it is that their boss has told them to get from us and there's communication problems. But in this case, we had liaisons that, that were with us, communicating with us all the time, all, and knew exactly what they wanted. Um, and that was a, that was a big help. Um, without uh, further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Fadi, who has the, uh, students uh, presentation uh, queued up. Do you guys confirm you see it? Yes. Can you can you full screen it? Oh, okay. It's a yeah, it doesn't look full. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Is it ready? All right. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. Okay, so to get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Justine West. Nathaniel Suarez. Tony Trung. Adia Hernandez. And Fadi Haddad. And our project is called The Archive, or formerly known as Global Tracks. Next slide. You can keep going. Okay, so throughout the course of our presentation, we will provide you with an introduction and background to the archive, information on the project technologies that we implemented, our major project requirements, some challenges that we faced, and a demonstration of our application. So first off, an introduction to the archive. What is the archive? Well, the archive is a social media style web application centered towards members of the LGBTQ plus community. Our application provides users a safe platform where they can publicly or anonymously share their stories and experiences. The archive allows people to post location based pins that are linked to stories to areas around the world and stories can be categorized as personal resources or historical and the responding colors are on the left hand side of this slide. Next slide. <clears throat> the site was founded in 2014 by Dr. Cynthia Wong, an assistant professor here at Cal State LA, and has been revamped <clears throat> excuse me, this past year with new co-founder Zachary Vernon, who is also an assistant professor here at Cal State LA. Next slide. To give you some insight on the archive's origin, it was originally released as Global Tracks and was built five years ago in PHP and JavaScript. So this year we decided to extend the site completely by rebuilding it from the ground up using different technologies such as Python, with Django, JavaScript with React, which will be discussed later on. This screenshot, sorry, my cat knocked a can over. Um, this screenshot is an image from the original site, which represents Global Track's initial brand and vision, which has kind of changed. Um, next slide. The archive still continues to serve as an archive of past and present movements, personal experiences, and resources and organizations, which is why you can see it's branded as the archive. The main goal of our application is to give users the opportunity to map out their stories and give them a place in the world and in history. As many of you may know, members of the LGBTQ community are not always accepted in many communities and cultures. And in some areas around the world, it is even illegal to be of different sexual orientations and identities, which makes it extremely dangerous for many individuals. Our application tries to combat this issue by giving people the ability to share their stories and experiences, access information about resources in their community, and learn more about LGBTQ plus history. Next slide. 
This past year, my team and I were very fortunate to collaborate with students of other disciplines. Especially in the past few months, we were guided by Zachary Vernon and various design students to ensure that the site follows the archive brand and overall design. The design students created an awesome style guideline, some of which is previewed on this slide here, which helped us a lot when it came time to make style and design decisions. As computer science students, style is not often stressed in our school assignments, so it was definitely beneficial for us to have exposure to this side of development. Next slide. In addition to collaboration with design students, Cynthia and the communication students were also very helpful in ensuring that the site has the appropriate content that is aligned with the archives brand and overall vision. This slide is an example of some social media content that is posted on the archives various social media accounts and maintained by the communication students. Overall, working with students and faculty of other disciplines really helped the project come together in a way where the functionality, design, and content was consistent throughout, which definitely benefited the outcome of the application. Next speaking is Nathaniel, who will be discussing project technologies. Thank you, Justin. And I'll be discussing what technologies we used. So our, for our backend server, we'll be using the Django REST, which is a Python-based free and open source web framework. And for our front end, we'll be using React, a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. And for our database, we'll be using Postgres. And the libraries we used is Leaflet, which is open source JavaScript library to handle our maps. Redux, a state management system. And for our servers, we hosted our backend on DigitalOcean, while we hosted our front end on Netlify. Next page. So the Django REST framework helps us create RESTful APIs to transfer information between an interface, such as React and the database of Postgres in a simple way. It also has a web browsable API, which we can post, create, update, or delete information. And since um, Django REST comes with resources, it helps us create our backend app much quickly and rapidly. And it is used by Mozilla, Red Hat, Heroku, and Eventbrite. Next page. And for our front end, we used React, a JavaScript library created by Facebook, used to build UI components. One of its philosophies is dry, which means don't repeat yourself, which means instead of copy and pasting the code over and over again, we just make it reusable, as you can see in picture A and B. They're both the same mo model, but with different text. All we did was just pass the information, such as the title and the text in the button. And with this, we'll, are, we'll be able to save code and make it more concise. And it is used by Uber, Facebook, Netflix, and Twitter. Next page. So we decided to re-implement the map with Leaflet since it is an open source library that uses JavaScript. One of its key features is it is flexible with map providers such as OpenStreetMaps and Mapbox, but we decided to use OpenStreetMaps. And there is a variety of layers we can use to style the map as seen on picture A. The issue with Google Maps is because there's licensing issues because they want you to use their own tile, later, tile layers. And since it works in JavaScript, it, we were able to use it right away in React. And there is a, uh, also an extensive list of plugins we can use, such as Marker Cluster, which clumps the pins together, as you can see in picture B. And as the user zooms in in the map more, the pins will spread out as seen on picture C. It helps uh, save costs and is used by Grubhub, Craigslist, and Esri. Next page. Another library we used is Redux. It is a predictable steam container for JavaScript apps. It ensures each component can have access to the state, such as whether a user is authenticated or not, or 
is anonymous mode on or off. And with this, we can have one source of truth between all of our components, seeing like the user is authenticated or not. So in picture A, you can see a user is logged in. But let's say a user wants to log out in a different component, such as the nav bar. Once the user logs out, it will update another, the profile page as seen on picture B, saying the user is not authenticated. With this, we can have cleaner code. And it is used by Instagram, Robinhood, and DoorDash. Next up is Tony with project requirements. Uh, hello. Um, I'm going to be focusing on some key requirements for our website, one of which is the user. There are three roles in our website, user, moderator, and administrator. All of the users have the basic function of creating, modifying, or interacting with any posts. They can go into anonymous mode or even customize their profile. Posts that do not comply with the web website's main image can be flagged by a user. Moderators have the power to remove flagged posts from problematic users, and administrators have the power to create more moderators, as well as all powers previously stated. Next slide. Another requirement I want to talk about is the stories that make up most of the website. We wanted creating stories to be as easy as possible for the user. It is intuitively designed such that a right click on the map places a pin. You fill out a form shown here, and a pin appears where you clicked and also in your profile page. We use tiny MCE to let the user express themselves with formatted text and images. Next slide. Now, as Justine previously mentioned, the LGBTQ community is not always welcome in certain places. In order to give a safe place, we decided anonymity is a big requirement. If the user activates anonymous mode in the header, any pins they make will turn, it, will turn to anonymous and will not be tied to the user's profile. And for extra protection, an anonymity radius feature is available for users who do not want to place a pin at the exact location and instead places a pin near to the original location. Shown here are the varying distances when the feature is active. Next slide. Another big part of the project is the map. This is the main eye catcher of the website since it is the first thing you see. We wanted the map to be accessible for everyone. And in order to do that, we have to make the map easy in the eyes and simple. The white map or black if you're in anonymous mode is dotted with colorful pins for everyone's stories, depending on the category. This map also boasts a clustering effect as you zoom out so the pins do not clutter your screen. Next slide. This is our data flow diagram. It looks simple because it is. This bare bones view shows us what the user, moderator, or administrator can do when they are on our website. Since so much of our data depends on the user's input, we have to make the site simple to use. We've employed many tactics to make the navigation of the site more streamlined. Next slide. Here is the more detailed view of the data and where it goes. It looks very complicated, but it really isn't. Simply put, all, our parts, all parts of our website work together in tandem to provide information and resources to and from the user. For example, the comment and story modules are part of a singular pin. That pin is set onto the map module and also to the user's profile module. Then the data from the pin gets stored into our database and in, is retrieved when anytime someone opens a map or the main website's map. This may sound straightforward, but here to tell you our hardships is Claudia. Hi, so I will be discussing some difficulties and challenges we encountered during um, our semester working on this project. So one of those is converting our code into React hooks. And what this is basically just converts our classes into functions and condenses our code and also makes it more reusable. 
Um, another thing is now that our website is ready and up to go for production, one of the things we're kind of have to look into is scalability, one of them being the database. So originally we had tried using an Amazon web, um, website service and um, so this, when we originally used it, it was kind of actually causing the website to be slower than it was. So we decided to move into DigitalOcean and that's still something that we're looking into and seeing. Uh, another thing is also the server checking scalability for that. We were also testing that out and trying out different servers and to see which one was better. And so in the future when the website starts gaining popularity, that's something more that we would probably have to look into and see which one would be the best fit for this website. Next. Um, another thing is styling, as Justine mentioned, as computer science students, we're not much into style. That's not something we really have to worry about. Um, it's more like do it if you have time and so forth. So as you can see on the left hand side, that was the best we were able to come up with when originally um, styling the website ourselves. You can see the top left is the profile page and the bottom left is the settings. And on the right hand side, you can see once we got um, our styling um, diagrams given how it turned out. And even that was a challenge having to work with other design students because we would have to wait for them because they probably had to come up and brainstorm with ideas of what they wanted and also had to get that approved and then that would be handed over to us and we would have to try to implement implement their visions and then sometimes when being up on the website it might have not been what they thought it was going to look like or maybe they had a change of thought and maybe thought oh maybe this would look better or this so we would have to start um, tweaking some stuff, but at the end, it all turned out looking great and nice. And so Fadi would more expand on this by showing us a demonstration of how the website actually looks like. Thank you, Claudia. When you first navigate to our website, you get a prompt requesting access to know your location. I've already accepted that prompt, but once you do accept it, the map will center on your current location. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. The first thing you notice after logging in is that the color of the map changed to white, signifying that we're no longer anonymous. This can be easily reverted by clicking here. As you can see, the yes has been highlighted and our usernames changed to anonymous. In addition to that, the map color background changed back to black. Now let's go ahead and add our first pin. Each pin has three different types of category. Depending on which category you select, the color of the pin changes. In addition to that, we have the anonymity, rate, anonymity radius down here. Now let's check out that pin we just added. Once, I, once you click on a pin, a sidebar from the right will appear with some information regarding the pin, pin itself. But in order to interact with that story, you have to go to the viewful story. Once there, you're able to favorite a post, drop a comment, and since we're the owner of this post, we can also edit and delete. We all know that trolls exist on the internet, so we have the, uh, an option available to flag comments and posts. Now let's say I want people to know that I posted this story. That could be easily done through their profile page. For every post that you post, you can easily change it to anonymous by, single, by a single click. As you can see, now it's posted by anonymous. Going back to the profile page, since we favorited a post, it will show up in our favorite post section. We can also edit our profile picture. And inside our settings tab, we can place a bio, make our profile, pri make our profile private, and we also have an accessibility feature. This feature allows everybody to use our website, comes in handy. Now going back to the map. In our top left corner, we have an icon that allows a user to add a specified pin with a specified ad. In our top center of the map, we have a search bar that allows to search by location.
And in our top right corner, we have a filter icon, which allows users to search stories by the title, description, category, and date range. In addition to that, you can also search for users. And in our bottom right corner, we have a center icon. When clicked on the center icon, it centers the map on your current location. And since we mentioned flags, moderators and administrators can manage those flag comments and stories. And since I'm a moderator, I can go to the management section and I can check out the post that I flagged. I can easily delete it and I can show the reports. But since I didn't give a report, there's nothing to show. So I'm gonna delete it, go back to the map. And as you can see, the pin has been deleted. In addition to that, above the map, we have a few different tabs, such as the Frequently Asked Question tab, and About Us tab with information regarding the website itself and founder and co-founder, and Support Us tab, where you can donate for us if you're feeling generous and you wanna help us out, it's always appreciated. And with some links to the archive uh, social media accounts, Resources. Donate to us means donate to the archive, not, not yeah. donate to the computer science stuff. <laughs> and then for the resources, help, uh, we have uh, help, help hotlines. And then the contact us tab, this is where user feedback can be given. Of course, if they wanted us to respond, they could give us an, an email, which is optional. And that concludes our demonstration. I'm going to go back to the slides. <clears throat> so we have goals hoping for the, for the project to continue off next year. Uh, the main goal is uh, hoping that the archive would have a mobile app developed for Android and iOS. In addition to that, uh, with time passing on, more users are likely to uh, use the website. So more issues are likely to appear. So we'd like, uh, so we'd like to manage those issues. And in addition to that, we'd like to take user feedback into consideration and adjust the site accordingly. Uh, furthermore, we have uh, we want to extend or en enhance and further enhance our privacy protections, such as using VPN and Tor, and finally uh, optimizing our search engine. <clears throat> but, uh, lastly, I would like to give credit to our PR team and our team. You see their names in front of you. They were a great help. In addition to that, I would like to give our thanks to our liaisons, uh, Cynthia and Zachary, and our group advisor, uh, John Hurley. Uh, which their help was very appreciated. And I wish everybody stay safe. And thank you all for your time. Does anybody have any questions? Can you go back to the accessibility? I saw in the chat uh, a uh, comment that you went very fast through the accessibility feature, but it's pretty oh. cool. Could, can you take a second to go back and demo that again? Of course. So you can change the colors the text, stop animations, bigger, change the cursor. And you can even read the page, which is very noisy, which is, so I'm not gonna press it. Yeah, the audio of that uh, with, yeah. so the audio of, of Fadi doing that screen sharing to me as the host of this presentation, and then it going back over Zoom, it, it wouldn't sound good, but if you listen to it, it sounds a lot better than it would here. So yeah, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> That concludes it. Uh, any other questions? So I uh, thank you very much, Fadi, Claudia, Nathaniel, Tony, Justine. Very good work. Very super work. Um, so you know, I'm assuming that you five are going to graduate uh, this year, or maybe in December. Um, I'm actually staying an extra year for my master's. Yeah. Like yeah. Some of us are but, graduating this semester yeah. too. Okay, yeah. it's just that when you want to update the archive, uh, then you're going to need somebody who knows React and the Django and etc. So, I mean, it, obviously it's not written in generic HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So, you'd need somebody very specific to, with a specific capability to do that. Yeah, as of now, I, I think we're going to have a new senior design team next year to continue on this project. So they'll be, you know, create, they'll be partly responsible for that, for maintaining and learning all these, or some of them for learning all these technologies. 
some of them for uh, creating the, the mobile applications, right? Because you see this is a great project for mobile and adding more functionality. So, so for, for next year, for next year, I think we've, we know how we're going to do that. What happens after next year, though, that, that still remains to be seen. But now you did use Bootstrap, so you should be responsive, right? Yes, the, most of the site is responsive. The only thing, the, head, the header sometimes is kind of clumped because there's so many tabs. But um, that could be easily switched out. But the site is majority responsive okay. on mobile devices. Yeah. And, and just a real quick geek question. When you save your passwords on the database, did you encrypt them or hash them? There's a hash through Django, yeah. Okay, thank you. I was wondering about the collaboration that is um, coming up with the next senior design project team. Is there some kind of like leadership that is um, like provided from the original team to secure communication and workflow? That's still, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, Elaine is best positioned to answer that question, so yeah. Okay. So Cynthia and Zachary and I had a conversation regarding continuation of this project next year. So I did approve to uh, do the uh, project next year and we already identified what will be the new features and new development for this project. For continuation, um, John Hurley will be the best person to advise this project if he agrees. And I think uh, Rebe who, who was the student uh, will be continuing as a graduate student? Right. So oh, I, that I, was Justine, yeah. who's, the, who's the group leader. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. I don't know. Are, are any of the other students, are the rest of you all graduating, or will any others of you be here in the fall? I'm graduating. We're graduating. Uh, graduating. We're all graduating except Justine. Okay, so everybody but Justine is. is okay. well, I mean, Justine's graduating, but staying for a <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes uh, there are students who are, you know, continuing as a graduate student and we invite them to consider this one as part of their work for either thesis or, or some other um, like a directive study, we can invite them. That's how we can keep the continuity, but many projects are uh, continuous with new students and we don't really see too much further. So um, with new students, I think uh, next year, we can still produce uh, as what we plan to. Yeah. But it's very important to have like a lessons learned or pitfalls or something because I've worked on multi-year projects over in the ME department and you're reinventing the wheel for the first few months. That's true. So uh, there is always a uh, learning time for students to get used to the previous code base. And we always kind of allocate time to do that. Either they learn new um, software tools or languages. So there's always like some time for learning. So um, we do expect that and I think the best way to have a smooth continuation is uh, to really leave a thorough documentation so that new students have enough information to start with. Yeah, but I think uh, if um, I can have um, the faculty advisor and a student from this team can continue, that would be best. Yeah, I think all of our teams from the different departments are putting together documents of strategies and uh, issues and anything that's left unresolved um, it, for the next team that comes on. Uh, I know that my students are, um, the requirements documentation that the CS students have been doing, it has been really extensive. Um, it, so I'm, I'm rather confident that whoever comes onto this project is going to have a crash course introduction prepared for them. But are all, are all the departments, the art department, the comm department, the computer science department, faculty members and the advisors, all putting this documentation into one known location like Slack or Google Drive or Canvas, or are they all scattered out? We have, so Cynthia's put together a, uh, a Dropbox where most of our documentation currently resides and it's a 
pretty much we're consolidating at the end of the semester. So it's a, yeah, it's a really good point, and it's yeah. something we're definitely trying to accomplish. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. We we have a way that we do that in computer science, but yeah, in all honesty, I had not thought about the fact that we should also have you know we should have one common thing for everybody. Yeah, so we'll do it our way, but we'll also do it in addition and put it in that Dropbox. Right, because if it gets scattered, the art department puts it somewhere, and the com department puts it somewhere else, and the marketing puts it somewhere else, mm -hmm. it's going to get lost. Yep. That's a good point. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I, I have to leave. So I, I want to give uh, one comment before I leave. So this project looks really great. This is really showcasing why computer scientists need to collaborate with the artists. It's aesthetically pleasing, uh, you know, look and yeah, it's great. Um, I, I really think uh, you guys did a great job and I thank uh, John for leading this team and a great outcome. It's congratulations. It's great. Thank you. So we should give a round Thank of you guys. applause. We should give a round of applause to Fadi, Claudia, Nathaniel, Tony, and Justine, and Professor Vernon for their work and effort. So super, super project. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank everybody for uh, attending and uh, let's see. So I said in, the, in response to a question about uh, 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 how to offer uh, comments about this project, I don't think we have a formal way in senior design to turn in comments about projects, but um, if you have comments about technical, technical issues of this, uh, suggestions or whatever, send them to me, jhurley2, and my email is in the chat, jhurley2 at calstateola.edu. Comments about the uh, suggested features, um, the content of the site, and, and that kind of thing should include me, but probably send them to uh, Zachary and Cynthia. And I will, with their permission, I'll put their email addresses. Or actually, I'll ask them. They're still on here. So actually, I'll ask them if, if they want to, to put their email addresses in there. So I would want to yes. hear about that, but things about things that the site should have or ways that the site should look that that's their bill. So I want to hear about it, but, but address it to them. Yeah. Cause yeah, so I, Professor Thorburn have forms that you have to fill out when you attend these. And I was uh, wondering if you had those, maybe you could talk to Mike about that. Yeah, it could be that that exists. I've advised a lot of senior design projects, but I guess maybe since I've never been the one that would have filled out that form, cause I was always the advisor, it could be such a thing exists and I don't know about it. Actually, if Elaine's still on the call, she would know. I think she, I think she left, yeah. but we included, um, we included our email in the, um, in the chat. Yeah. So if you have any comments, please do uh, email us. And thanks also to you, Professor Wong, for developing this. And, and I left your name out. I apologize. No, no worries. Also, I want I want to make sure that um, that Dr. Kate Curtin from Com is uh, is also acknowledged in this. Um, she led the uh, the public, the PR and uh, Com mm -hmm. team. Great. Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Any other questions? And question? also for the sorry. And also thank you to Silco for the in art uh, the in art support as well. Yeah, I, I think this, as far as I know, this is the first time we've ever. Uh, Collaborated with a with an art department or a design department in these projects, and oh boy, did it make a difference! Yeah, yeah this looks so good. Uh, that slide with the before and after was so <laughs> great job. We need to excited. show off our skills, our design skills. <laughs> <laughs> great work! I'm really, really, really happy with the output. Y'all did great. A great job. Look at how colorful that is. That's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Couldn't have done it without you guys. <laughs> All right, graduate and go like, you know, what's next? <laughs> do great things. <laughs> all right, everybody, I'm gonna get to my class, but I'll see you all again later. See you, okay. thank you. Thank you all for coming. Okay. Bye bye all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, really, really nice job, guys. Great, great project. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Now what? Is, is there anything else we should discuss now? Now that <laughs> great advising professor.
Appreciate it. Thank you, Hurley. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and, and incidentally, I think next week we probably should have our regular meeting. Uh, okay. Or maybe because there are a couple of cleanup issues. We have to discuss the final, uh, yeah. the final uh, deployment. And if there's anything we can do in the last week to make sure that um, it's not slow when, when we deploy, because we don't really know what's going to happen when we deploy in the final place. So, yeah, um, and then also yeah. transfer the droplet and database to Cynthia. Yeah, and um, and as we discussed before, the, the repository to me. Yeah, so actually, let's try to talk about that with email, and then we'll see whether we need to have the meeting next week. Okay.